They played a series the other day that was apparently very good. I think Dark was up 3-1. to one. Oliveira brought it back and won 4-3. to three. Hey, if they give us a good uh, series in there in the best of seven, maybe they can give us a banger of a best of three today in the Wardy TV Monday's quarter finals. Win this and you're into the prize money. As in the top right corner of the map, we're going to start things off with the Red Terran player, Oliveira. Battle of former world champions 2022 versus 2019. In the bottom left hand side, our Blue Zerg player from Talon Esports. We have Dark. Always maintain such a high level. Top four Esports World Cup this year. What a performance that was for him until that semi final was a blasting from Serral. But, um,. Yeah, like I say, Dark always maintained that high level of play. Always looking so good. Always looking great. Has been a fantastic player to watch over his career. And uh, anytime we get to see Dark from here on out, I'm, I'm just still happy that he's still around and with us and playing some more games with us still. Overlord heading to the top right side of the map. It's just going to be journeying over as we get started here. Game number one of the best of three. Figuring out what we want to do. What we want to get up to. In the first few minutes, I mean, it looks as though Doc is just checking around for proxies with a drone over here as well. Just trying to be very cautious early on. Not uh, going to leave anything uh, up to be uh, up to chance or anything. Just trying to get some good info early. Cracks and a couple of gases coming through on the side of Oliveira. So bring that by. Command center coming up. SCV coming through. There's the hatchery going down on the natural. So going to get that started immediately. Hatchery into play. Right from the get go. Get this started up. And the Reaper coming through. CC on the way. A couple drones in the hatchery will continue to come about now as well. So we'll get that on the go here. A couple of orbitals coming through. The Reaper in the factory coming up as well. Continue to bring that about. I see that queen still moving about. Creep Jim is coming about as well. Extra queens, drones all in the way. The factory is coming through. The barracks coming up, the SCV is still producing. We'll see. The early game does take a few moments to really get underway. Nothing too wild about that for the very first moments here. So everybody's going to go pinging onto the hatchery. So the hatchery is going to start taking some damage. We got a starboard coming down as well. A couple of SCVs still coming out on the side of Oliveira. Marines, SCVs, the barracks, and the starport all continue to come through. We just have ourselves the queen there, able to push that Reaper away as well. The Marines still just going after that Overlord's just trying to do a little bit extra here, seeing what else might happen. Got ourselves the queen coming up, the roach run coming through as well. We continue to bring that in for the moment. We have now a stim on the way, uh, roach run and a hatchery coming through, a few more drones still coming about. Again, this that Reaper moving back into the center a little bit. It's just coming back across there. And that Roach Run still coming online. And a couple of spores building up. Roaches could be a fun play uh, here from Dark. So that's definitely one thing we can uh, look at pretty quickly on this and see how that's going to go. Let's just have the Lair and the Extractor coming up. A couple of spores coming through as well. Our Marines continue to gather around. And just got the Marines in the Siege Tank. 
Also going to be pressing out onto the map, so just going to bring those straight through. Extra Marines in production, Stim and plus one attack upgrades coming by. And a good push. Now down to the bottom left corner here. As you just have the roaches on the way. Are they going to be here in time to really protect against this? That's going to be our question mark, I suppose, but... I mean, there's already a few out. Tank is siege, of course. That's going to be a danger to this as the Queen and the Roaches arriving now on the front doorstep. The Viking overhead. The Roaches and the Queen's going to start pushing through. Just going to be seeing a couple of Marines begin to go down. Roaches taking an absolute beating here. The Marines continue forward. They're going to get on toward that hatchery. Queen's still taking a beating as well. Now, this gold base is going down. Oliveira's little push is going to work wonders. Gets in, does some great damage. A Queen left in the front as well. And donation from Dark. A parting gift is this army will unsiege and go home. And Oliveira, don't get me wrong, 40 SCVs only. He's on two bases. He's pretty committed in this game, right? Single engineering bay upgrade, everything. You know, no add-ons on the barracks. Everything points to aggression right now. But this was a great start. Denying the gold base pretty much for free. Slows Doc down that little bit. He's going to try and reestablish a fourth base on the right-hand side. So that's money invested there. Again, he's not really benefiting from just yet. And so melee upgrades continue through. The Ravages are still building up. Again, plus one attack. Not far from being done. Combat shield is halfway done as well. Just going to be having our spawning pool is just set that challenge. You build melee upgrades, but there's no link speed in the game. Well, Goldbase going to have to cancel again here from Dark, so he's not going to get away with that one. Like I say, he's building the melee upgrades, and yet we're not really set up to really utilize links at all. First Crows of Vals coming down, getting rid of the first each time. We used some Crows of Vals on the Marines, though, but I'm not sure that's going to be enough as Oliveira pushing on into this. Like I say, he's very committed to this attack, and if he does lose momentum, he'll probably just lose this game. But he's been doing okay, but he's still losing tanks, and he's actually going to lose all the Marines in the end. It's really the last few units of Dark, because he only just manages to get rid of that tank as well. Needed the auto attacks on top of the Corrosive Bowels. He's lost 13 drones during this. He had to pull drones into this defense. So he's only on 49 workers, but he's playing against a two-base all-in, so... If he's still alive, he's still very much so in the game. Upgrades are finishing, so that's a big benefit. I just hope he's not going to make a massive round of lings and then realize, oh no, I do not have ling speed. I cannot actually engage with these. Because uh, that would be a major waste. If he's going to get those melee upgrades and maybe work towards Banes and Bane speed, sure. I mean, Dark is still a bit... I mean, there is a third command center building now from Oliveira. Dark's going to come in and try and deny that. And to be fair, that comes in at a time where Dark is looking to tech. So Dark is, Dark is correct to tech because actually your opponent is trying to slow down into that third base. I think Dark runs away with this game. He just droned up in a big way. He's going to continue to move through in a big way as well. Alright, Madivac's going to load up and they're going to go out across the other side. Away they go. Roach Ravager continues to move through for the moment, so again, trying to see a little bit more of what's just happening here as we just have our Marines dropping off. A few of these uh, Medivacs unloading. Our Queens and our Roach continue to move through. The couple of Zerglings are going to come across as well. Medivacs will load up and go elsewhere as you just see one more Crows of Vile. Another Liberator going down there. Oliveira trying to unload onto the low ground. And getting some drone damage done, it feels necessary because otherwise this was not looking pretty. The extra drones going down. Observe, I was missing it. As over here, this Liberator picks up seven kills. So the Liberator is being huge. First of Vals, but the Liberator is moving away in time. So we are going to get out alive. Meanwhile, Roaches are still attacking in at the front, dealing with these Marines that are dropping. I mean, Dark is starting to spread everywhere. Now getting that Link Speed, by the way. Bane Speed as well. Bane Speed before Link Speed going to be finished. It's a classic. Is our Medivac and Marines get back to the center. Three more Roaches on the Ravager going down. You can see the Ravager falls. The Roach still being chased away to that far left-hand side as well. Take a big step forward in this game. And a couple more Corrosive Files. Siege Tank's going to split apart. Siege Tank's going to try and Siege. I mean, the Corrosive Files didn't hit initially. Now we're going to get some down. Can we finish off those Siege Tanks? As Dog has taken a beating. The Roach Ravager eating so many tank shots to begin with. Still not really any splash damage here as well. Do we have the DPS to go through the bio units? It does not seem as though we do. The bio is going to sit here. Ravages and Lings dropping. The Queen dying. Supplies tilting over into Oliveira's favor as the initial attempt of a two base all in didn't get the job done. But he's been able to come through with the attempted third base and then another push. And now he might just about have this. We're going to lose a reinforcing siege tank there. It goes down before the Medivac saves it. However, it comes at the cost of some Ravages. 
the bio can jump on those out of position. The hatchery dies, fourth base gone. Broodlings did nothing. And with a couple more Ravages morphing in, the desperation defense here from Dog, because he will try and push through. Liberator is going to get a load of damage done. The Siege Tank is getting Siege. Uh, Ravages are not here for Corrosive Bowels just yet, and Roaches are going to obviously take a massive beating off of the Siege Tank. It does so well against them as the rest of the drones pulled in. And again, Dog will clean this up and push this back, but this feels so much worse now. Before, when you push this back, it was like, okay, well, Oliver is only just starting to third base. He's only just starting to look to the future. Now it's like, well, the third base is up. His army account is still looking very good. You take him damage. Your fourth base is dead, Dark. The only good thing I see here for Dark is upgrades. He's got 2-2 against an Oliveira that's extremely late to the armory and second engineering bay. So his 2-2 is a mile away. Now, of course, eventually 2-2 catches up because the Zerg is in no right, you know, no right state of mind to head in towards a hive. So they cannot possibly go 3-3 and extend further. And also, the upgrades are for melee units. We're still primarily on, well, I guess we're going a lot more Ling Heavy now, but we were on a lot of Roaches still, so they don't benefit from the melee. They still do benefit from the Carapace, at least. There is the Hive coming up from Dark. I mean, maybe he can now start going into Hive here, right? Because, again, Oliver steps back a second. But this is definitely a tricky situation for Dark to simply put. Vigor is way out of. The Ravages and the Lings come over. The Medivacs try to drop into the main base. That isn't going to go anywhere. Libra shows up again. Man, the Libs are being so annoying. I mean, in a couple different times. And again, look at that. Just unsieges, backs away before you get eaten up by Corrosive Bowels. That means you can siege again and continue to be annoying. Just being a freaking frustration here as these vials go down, but they are not going to finish up. Needs the Queen to put the final touches on this one. We see how things still coming through. Tank's going to be firing and Bio going to be there. Ravager's moving about as well. Good Bane's coming about. Ravager's moving through. Going to see more corrosive balls going about as well. We see how Ravager's moving about. Bane's moving through. Two upgrades coming in. Because the bar's dropping through, Siege Tank's going to get grabbed. The bio going to start stepping forward as well. Just going to be having the bio force still stepping up into this. Our Ravagers throwing some more corrosive valves through. Our tree just going to be taking a lot of damage as Oliveira is pushed. Doesn't have to go all in all the way, you know, straight away, right? He's got the tanks a bit further back. He's having just slowly chipping down this hatch and forcing Dark to attack into tank fire if he wants to try and step into this and deal with this. So... I think a very responsible approach from Oliveri. He gets rid of that base again. Now the gold could be a target because that's the new fourth base essentially of Dark. By the point where, yes, Hive is up. 3-3 three, three will start. That upgrade deficit, by the way, of Oliveri is about to be uh, undone with his own 2-2 finishing in a moment. I mean, I think Oliveri has done a great job of limiting Dark's economy during this time. With less upgrades, he's still being able to make good fights by forcing it with the siege tanks. Dark is really struggling to move around this map properly right now. I mean, he's every time he fights, it feels like he's got to go up a ramp and run into some trouble. It's fascinating because actually a lot of the players have really seemingly kind of fallen a bit in love with post youth lately as the Terrans. The Zerg seem to be loving this map in the past, and now I feel like Terrans have really figured out a lot of ways to kind of make this map very good for them. And uh, ever since, the uh, Terrans have been definitely doing a little bit better, and it's very, would be nice to uh, see more good Zerg representation a day too. Try and avoid some of those TVT mirror matchups if possible. We are in the bottom left corner of the map with our Red Terran, who is up a game in this best of three. Going into Amphion, we'll see what sort of style he brings. He two base all in it last time, had to go into the third, but kept up the pressure, kept up the aggression, and he made it work. It's Oliveira in the bottom left of Amphion. In the top left, our blue Zerg player from Talon. It is Dark. Game two of this best of three. As we get this off and away. Alrighty, guys. So, game number two. See where we're going to go. 
I mean, obviously, would be kind of surprised if Oliver came with the same kind of aggression again. So definitely just expecting something different in that regard from the very get-go. As the drone moves out from the natural, going to be heading out onto the map. And it's again just Dark being very cautious of proxy racks and so on, trying to make sure that nothing like that is going to catch him off guard. It's just uh, yeah, looking for some possibilities there. Well, that's just coming up, spawn pool coming in. Do need to bring this around to just have our hatcheries continue to complete. Crippling ring coming up, CC on the way out. Again, a few extra links in the queen building as well. Let's see how Reaper gonna shoot. A couple of shots coming out, some links taking some damage as well, so some hits off early here. We've seen our uh Reaper continue to shoot, a couple of links still taking hits. Reactor coming on the line. Again, a couple of queens still on the way out. Reactor finishing, command center building. Reactor swaps on over to that reactor. Uh, starport will begin. So Oliveira going to play the 1-1-1 one, one, one opening, but he is going triple CC. So he has the triple command center setting up. It is going to be economy focused from him. You see a good idea of where this game is going to go in his regard very soon as the Reaper dives in for a little grenade and a shot. And Doc just droning and queening. And just building the early game units does not want to build anything else until as late as possible at that point he's going to pull the trigger on you know whatever units he feels like he's going to need of course before then we will have to see some tech structures coming up dark has played this completely gasless early so pretty greedy opening from dark we're not going to see link speed for a very long time will Oliveira find a way to capitalize and punish that sometimes you can kind of slip on by and squeeze through jump on a mineral line because the links don't have speed to catch hellions running past so the queens are going to be of utmost importance as we're once again going to go into that road run as well and just dive straight towards the three hatch roach play very akin to what we saw in the previous game as well to be honest i see another grenade going down A bit more damage being done. Let's just have ourselves aliens gathering up. It's going to be seeing the Overlord pick up some shots there as well. Viking is going to land and pick off a creep tumors. Just going to get a little grab on that one as well as we move. I'm good so far. Aliens I'm just gonna pick off a couple of these roaches already, just a little bit too far forward, and they're gonna get punished for it, so some damage being done. Damage dealt right away there. I think it's nice to get rid of a couple of those roaches if your opponent's trying to play defensively, and so just knocking a couple of those down immediately is a pretty major plus, so yeah, you kinda take those wins if they're given to you. Almost always the secret, isn't it? You take what you're Take what you're given. Let's just have our one more upgrade still coming through. Additional roaches and the roach speed coming up as well. So bring that straight on by. One one roach speed again. The Hellions and the Reaper coming back over that right side. Just going to be seeing another hatch here in the front. So Doc just going to get that ready to go. Setting 
health as best as we can for now. Yo! Boom, boom, pow. Let me get on that in a moment. Thank you so much, though, as we do have the Overseer taking some shots here initially from the Marine drop into the main base. We've got a moment right now. First of all, boom, boom, pow with the regular sub coming in and uh, sub themselves. And then gifted out five. And, of course, with that September deal, that turns it into six as Twitch add an extra. Going out to Jim here, Flack on seven, Endless Tessellations, Raven243, Fate3000, three, uh, 3, and Vina Mornen7. Thank you so much, Bomb Bomb Pow, for uh, gifting out a whole bunch of subs. I'm not sure why the gifted subs are coming in one at a time on the uh, on the alerts. Usually they're meant to come in as a clump, but that's okay. A few dings in the chat. We'll get through it. Thank you so much, Bomb Bomb Pow. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you for supporting this stream today and making use of that September deal. It is the final day, Dark, guys. Get five subs, get one or more free from Twitch. Great time to, to throw some love if you're a sub gifter. Get some bonus out of your mo money. Help support some StarCraft too. Always appreciate it. Let's just have our roaches moving up. Just gonna see the medivacs moving around a little bit as well. Trying to see a bit more of what we can get up to here. And just moving in for the moment. Roach Ravage are going to try and come up this ramp and just going to be seeing the uh, couple of depots going down. So now Dog attacking on two different sides. He's going to get on top of the first siege tank on the left as well. Marines will continue to go down. Uh, a little bit of bio moving about as well. No, Dog's just going to take it. Oliver is not ready enough for this at all. He's losing on two different fronts. He's going to get completely cleaned up and Dark is going to take us to justified spending on. As we do have... In the bottom left-hand side, game number three. Hey, we're getting to a game three. We haven't had game three today yet, have we? It's going to be the red Terran player, Oliveira. While in the top right-hand side, we'll start this off with the Blue player, Talon Esports Dark. Yo, what's up, Hot Ice? Thank you so much for the three-month resub on the Prime as well. Thank you so much. You've got a Prime available, guys. Consider using it. We will make sure some of that Prime sub money goes into tournament prize pools. Again, we are looking to run as much StarCraft 2 as possible in the coming uh, in the coming uh, months, weeks. Basically, for the rest of this year, I don't know how long the off-season for StarCraft is going to last, but we want to make sure the StarCraft... You guys know us. We want to make sure the StarCraft pretty much every day. That's kind of our vibe usually, so I'm trying to stick with that a little bit. As you have Hatchery coming through. Rowan is on the way up, bringing all of that about. Rax and the SCV is still coming through as well. As you do have our Drone of Dark continuing to cross over to the bottom left side of the map. It's just on a, a bit of a journey there. React on the way from Oliveira, the Orbital Command coming through as well. Just continue to bring that out. Seeing the couple hatches continuing through also, so just bringing all of that up and running. We have ourselves the reactor about to finish up on the barracks, so as that reactor is done on the racks, we'll be able to bring that in. Yo, thank you so much, Snickers SE2, for the three month reset on the Prime as well. Appreciate it. See, your know, prime shout out's always worthwhile. And Cattle is God just being a legend on the 71 months, coming up to six years of subscribing on the channel next month. That's incredible. Thank you so much, guys, for the support and the subs. We really appreciate it as the bunker goes down onto its third base location. So, just going to get that into place straight away. A couple Marines step forward. The Overlord here already going to take a couple pings of damage. Bunker continuing up as well. As we just see the couple of marines in the factory continue to come about. Again, Bunker is on the way. The command center coming through. That overall just staying alive there for Dark for a little while longer then.
He's gonna step in. He's gonna be seeing the Queen in a few lanes. He's gonna go after that bunker as well. He's just gonna get a little bit more damage dealt as we do just finish that off. That was never really gonna become too much of an issue, and that's just guaranteed by how that plays out in the end. So nicely handled there. And a few Marines moving about. Marines moving around, Rotron coming up, the couple of aliens are going to fire, Ling's going down pretty much immediately as well. Medivac and the Hellion still coming up and online. The tech lab coming through. Medivac going to move on to the map. And the command center just going to get going on the third base location. Just going to get that up and running. Our steam pack coming through. His Marines is going to load. And Oliveira not just going to be uh, super aggressive here. It's just Marine Hellion. No armory in sight. No Hellbat timing to this. Just a little bit of pressure to help set up into the game. As that medevac of marines, they work around the right-hand side there, so they're going to be moving up in toward the main base very shortly. The Hellion's going to run by at the same time. Drone does not become the evolution chamber there to clean that up. This is the danger, because you don't have link speed catching up with those Hellions. The marines going to be in the main at the same time. Queens and roaches will try and fight that. That medevac took a lot of damage, but is not quite dead. It is going to go down now, so no more healing. This should be kind of easily dealt with in the end, I think. Seven drones going down. Obviously, lost mining time as you move around. Oliveira is going to lose every single unit he has in this game to this. And Dark is going to be, what, still up seven workers? I don't love that from Oliveira. I mean, that's a massive dive. All the Hellions dead. Yeah, all the Hellions are dead. All of the Marines are dead. Medivac's dead. It wasn't a super fast third base either. Like, you build your third on location. But it wasn't super quick. We've seen much faster three CCs in this matchup. I mean, this was just... This wasn't pretty. I think plain and simple. Well, that was just not worth it. The thing is, I don't think this is a bad position if you don't give up all your units. But because you've given up your units, you now invite the discussion of, well, is this okay? Is this all right? Or is this actually just straight up problematic? And I think the answer is, yeah, this is straight up problematic. Because our Roach is going to go jumping onto this set of depots. So depots will take a few shots of damage. Have an hour. First couple of depots going down, and we will actually see I mean, a couple of depots dropping there. Ravager taking some shots. Plus one attack and combat shield both coming through the third CC of Oliveira. Set up on the low ground. In the end, we don't actually do anything really with those roaches. I mean, we're still though, getting a couple of depots is nice. It's essentially free damage for how this went. A couple of cancels come through, and we are on our way to the 1-1 missile upgrades to build those roaches up into a powerhouse in the next stages of this game. So getting that up and ready as well. Let's check your little score update, by the way, as uh, this match goes on. Clem leads Trap 1-0 to zero already, so... Clem has the advantage in that series, I and mean, he looked very good against Trap in the finals of the Wardy TV Festival yesterday. It would have been kind of wild to see a turnaround from uh, Trap after that today, but hey, it happens, right? It's not an impossible uh, happening. There's now about Roach and Rav just still set up in the center. 1-1 one, one upgrades are still coming through. The missile upgrades, the Ling speed, the Roach speed continues out for now. Get that all building up. A couple of crows of bells is going to force the marines to step away a little bit. The traffic comes through, a single marine goes down. We will see the 11 roaches about to finish up. Again, one more missile upgrades, the link speed all coming by for the moment.
This kind of squad's gonna fire. Medivac's gonna get pushed away, so I've got plus two attack and plus one armor on the way. Plus one is one armor is about to be done. Got a roach ravager still coming through the hatchery. Coming online here from Oliveira as well, so that's gonna be him. Sorry, from Dark as well. So he's just gonna go into as many bases as possible. Has that gold base operational maxed out right now? The problem with being maxed out on a map like Alcyone is can you attack into the defensive Terran? Can you justify this move? First cross of battle is going to start coming down, but not a lot of them are straight away on the tanks. So we're going to need a lot of tank shots, and you can see very quickly that Dog's going to be losing out his uh, maxed out status. He gets a couple units down in on the south side. Now he's going to get surrounded by Marines, and Oliveira is going to play cleanup. And that's a lot of expensive Ravages that are just going to bite the dust and have to be remade. 23 Roaches in production, but he has no gas left, so actually Dog cannot build any Ravages at all just yet. I almost saw this coming. This was like a slow motion uh, moment where it's like, no, Doc, you know this isn't good for you. And it doesn't matter. The game. <laughs> he commits to it anyway, you know. And some tanks coming across. 2-2, two, two, plus one vehicle weapons coming up. Libs, the tanks, the marines coming by as well. It's going to be stepping forward as we'll get rid of a couple of ravages. Which is going to be there as well to push those marines back. Just another step or so. Splitting units up. We're going to start diving through. Again, a lot of those marines going down. A couple of of fouls still dropping as well. Roach Ravager is going to get all the way forward. Siege tanks continuing to die. Yeah, I mean, this is nice, Toss. Obviously, you're making progress here. Cross of fouls landing one tank toward the watchtower is actually a huge deal, and it's a nice evacuation. On the medevac with that siege tank, trying to keep that alive as well. A couple of libs sieging up, and that's going to force Doc to turn back away as he'll go back to the uh, reinforcement board. Uh, Oliveira just finished up plus two attack. He's obviously getting plus two armor finished shortly. That should bring up it to be completely even because Doc's own 2 2 should finish up very soon as well. But it's there right now. We're coming around, just going to be seeing the Marines get into the center. It's going to be a little shut down. Dark does have decent creep, and a man, he's not stopping expanding. Hatchery into the bottom right as well, gets that going immediately, so can get that uh, started with immediate effect. As the Marines load up into Medivacs in the center there. 32 more Zerglings on the way out as our melee upgrade comes through on the side of Dark. And then these Medivacs and Marines continue to move about for the moment to just have Liberator Sieging. A couple drones going down. Actually, gets picked off. He's going to step in, pick off another drone as well. So one more pick off there. Seven, our bioforce, our tanks all gathering in. Hive, melee, bane speed, uh, bane nest coming up. So ready to switch up, Doc, as well from just pure road ravage into the ling bane aspect of this. Also, so trying to get that on the go. Hive building, 16 lings on the way. Melee upgrade coming through. The Bane Nest is halfway done as well as our Ling, Bane, uh, Ling Road Ravager starts to step forward. I just don't like this fight. There's so many siege tanks. Dark Supply gets dismantled. I mean, he goes back into 28 Roaches, but you just can't keep rebuilding Roaches forever. I mean, especially when you're not making any progress in the fights. These tanks are a major problem. These Liberators are going to take attention away from other things. As the Ravagers go down, no corrosive bars left. Doc has to type GG. Our final Zerg of the day will fall as Oliveira will move 